Hello friends, thank you for tuning in on the Accessing the Magic Within You broadcast. It was a really, really special live event and the energy was strong and flowed and thank you to all of you who were present on the day and engaged in such beautiful ways with all of your comments. If you're here because you want to watch the replay, please go ahead to your heart's content and also please share it with anyone that you feel may benefit. Also, if you weren't there live and you are just about to check it out, I hope you enjoy and it brings you many gifts. And if you want to go deeper with me on the topic of who we are as magical humans and souls, then please join me for the online retreat Soul Magic, which starts in June, and you can find out more about it in the link below. Lots of love, everyone. Take good care. Hello, everyone. Welcome to those of you who are here live. We're here live right now. So thank you for showing up and uh, for anyone watching this in the future. As my guides always say, whenever you're watching it or listening to it, it's live for you. So thanks for tuning in today. And I'm assuming that most of you know me or my work. That's probably why you're here. But for those of you who don't, I'm someone who I've been a student of metaphysics and healing and personal development for 31 years now, since I was 16. And that was when I really actively became uh, a seeker, but a seeker not just for the sake of seeking, I wanted results. I wanted to feel changes that I knew I needed. I knew that parts of me weren't fully open in the world the way I wanted them to be. And I was absolutely mesmerized by the feeling I would get when I would go for a tarot reading. It didn't fully make sense to me, but my whole energy field would come alive and it would crackle. And over time, what I've come to understand is that that level of, if you like, unseen energy, the things around us in the world, the mystical thread that connects us all, there are many of us on the planet who have access to that and we seek it and it becomes part of our life. And even for people who don't have some awareness or connection to that magic, my perspective in the life I've lived and how I've seen these things work is that there is this connective thread, this mystical energy between us all. There is a, an energetic thread that you can start to interpret, read, tap into, and we'll all tap into different things. But for me, I would say, you know, prior to being 16, magic to me showed up in the form of creativity, which is one of the magical areas on earth. So the reason I wanted to create today with all of you just this free broadcast to access the magic within you is, number one, we're living at a time where more and more people are beginning to feel, see, sense more than we used to. More than we used to be allowed to, more than we were trained to believe or see or feel. And the truth about magic is you can't persuade someone else who hasn't had the experience to agree with you or believe it. You know, there are many, many sayings out there that go something along the lines of, uh, I'll believe it when I see it. I personally believe I believe it when, I'll, when I feel it. And I think people have to have a direct experience of whatever magic means to them to believe it. So I remember in my early 20s, I would go to these workshops and I would come home and try and drag my mum and dad with me to these personal development workshops. And they're like, no, 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 no thanks. And at the time, I didn't really connect the dots between me accessing more of my personal magic. And what I mean by my personal magic is, am I in alignment with spirit in my life? Am I listening? Am I sensing? Am I allowing spirit and spiritual lessons, laws, energies to be visible to me in my life or not? That to me is my personal magic. Am I using the certain skills and talents I might have in those areas in a way that is enhancing my life and the lives of others. Now, what I didn't understand when I was 24, 25, 26, 
I saw them as two separate worlds. I saw the magic of intuition and connected flow and creativity and the sensory as over here. And I saw personal healing as over here. And what I mean by personal healing is, let's say you grew up with really low self-esteem. You grew up in an environment where people put you down or no one ever really saw you. Perhaps you were around other people who were being seen, but no one stopped to turn to you and say, I really see your greatness and I see what's good in you and I'm going to nourish and nurture that. So you ended up with quite low self-esteem because there was no one who was affirming to you. No one was encouraging you to take your place, take your space. So that's what I mean by personal healing. It would be, okay, I'm going to these workshops because I keep having this low self-esteem that's getting in the way of my relationships or that's getting in the way of my work success or that's getting in the way of my abundance. And what I've come to understand having now worked in this field for 19 years with other people. And the best thing about doing this work is you get to really see things from the other side. So as a student, I get to see it from a certain perspective. But what I've started to notice is some of our collective beliefs around what magic is and what it isn't. The first thing I'll say is we separate it. We separate from spirit. One of the big things that we do is we go, oh, well, that's a spiritual message, so it's somewhere over there. Or the person who gave me the spiritual message is there, therefore more important than the person who just helped me in a shop or helped me at the doctor's office or whatever it is. And I do not believe that at all. I don't believe that magic and human are separate. I believe they have been separated. I believe that we were taught to separate out our magic and our spirit from our humanity. And that is the biggest mistake we could ever have made. And we didn't make it willingly, we were trained that way. So to jump back a second, what I didn't realize when I was going to these personal development healing workshops was what I was actually doing was learning to let more of my magic in. Because your magic can only operate through you and reveal itself in the world when you are able to be clear enough to hold and sustain it. I'll give you an example. I worked with a client many years ago when I was doing one-on-one -on -one sessions still, and this client had really great intuitive messages. Uh, she would get really strong intuitive messages about what, what she could do with her life and the direction her life would go in. And I remember once she had this message that she was going to be really abundant and so she got really excited about it and I can't remember what exactly happened but something came in that released a bunch of money into her life which she had wanted. But she also had this family wound around financial sabotage. Her family, her ancestral line and thus some of her belief system was that money is dangerous, that money doesn't bring you any good, that money is only trouble, because they had had very negative experiences around money. So lo and behold, within six months, this abundance that she'd inherited was gone and she'd got rid of it. And she was so angry at the universe. She was mad at the magic. She was like, oh, you told me I was gonna be abundant and now I'm not. What she wasn't recognizing was her human couldn't hold it because her human had a story of money is bad, money isn't good, don't hold on to money, money will be taken from you. So because of all of those belief systems in her, once this money came in, she very quickly frittered it away, gave it away. She didn't think, okay, what could I do with this that's going to sustain me and help me move forward as well as some of the generosity I can use it for. So she got into this belief that, oh, I'm abundant forever now. And she took that in. And the way she played with her abundance as a human being meant it all went away. And when she was mad at the universe, we had a conversation where I said, no, it's not, it's not the universe that took your abundance away. It's the way you played with it. And that's the lesson for all of us. We're constantly in our human life, interacting with spiritual energy. But the truth is, 
we can only become as magical or spiritual or flowing in our life as we will allow at a human level. And I know that self-judgment can be a huge thing in this field of personal development and spirituality. There can be this, oh God, I, you know, I had this great opportunity and I ruined it, I messed it up. Uh, and, and, you know, my guides, the Z's, who I met when I was 23, they have always said that self-judgment is a massive red stop sign. So if you catch yourself judging yourself, which I don't know how many of us <laughs> have repetitive experiences of judging ourselves, but I know I did for many, 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 many years. And even today, you know, my subtle areas show up. So I notice them. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I'm being hard on myself in that area. The more we can let go of our self-judgment, the more we can begin to heal the area that we are judging. But while we're just judging ourselves for, oh God, I, I got rid of all the money. Well, it doesn't really matter because you can, you can bring the money back, but while you're focusing on the past or the regret, you'll never be able to move forward. And magic and connection are always calling us forward. They're always around. They're always there. It's why we don't often recognize our human angels. So I, I remember having a conversation with someone once who was saying to me, oh, well, I never get any angels. I never, I never feel angels around me. I never sense them. I often ask for angelic help. And then, you know, in the same breath, this, this friend started, I was like, well, how are things going? Well, I've, everything's been going really badly, but my friend has let me stay for free in, in her spare room for the last two months. So that's really helped. And then this friend gave me some furniture and I'm like, well, there are your angels. They're human, they're in human form. We're all connected to angelic energy. We all have our angelic moments where we feel guided to help or to give. So when I was talking to a friend yesterday and she was asking what I was doing today, I said, oh, I'm doing a broadcast called Accessing the Magic Within You. And she said, well, what does that mean? And I explained some of the things I've just explained. And she went, well, no, the definition of magic is not humanly. Because I was saying, I'm going to talk about spiritual magic and I'm going to talk about human magic. So I decided to go to the dictionary last night and by the way, for any of you watching this live, um, I have a few little notes that I thought might be helpful to you. So we're going to pop those onto a worksheet. But because this is down to the wire for me, because whenever I'm working live, I'm down to the last minute as to getting ready for you. Um, this will take probably a few hours to appear. But if, you, if you're watching live right now, there will be a link underneath. That's the page where we'll put the... Um, the worksheet for you. And it's just a few notes, but I want to share this with you. Dictionary definition of magic. The power of apparently influencing the course of events by using mysterious or supernatural forces. An example is suddenly as if by magic, the doors start to open. Okay, so that's how most people maybe think of the word. Um, there is also here uh, move, change, or create by, or as if by magic, he must have been magicked out of the car at the precise second it exploded. So I was like, okay, my friend's right. This is what the traditional definition of magic is, I guess. But then I found this, and that really interested me, the, the top search w term for magic. What does being magic mean? And the answer was this on Google. If you refer to a person's magic, you mean a special talent or ability that they have, which you admire or consider very impressive. So as a metaphysical student 31 years ago, to me, I found tarot readers very impressive. I found intuitives very impressive. I found good spiritual teachers very impressive. 31 years ago because it was a whole new world that was opening to me in me. I was beginning to access my magic, my connection to this world. I didn't at the time know that I would end up working in this field and, and I wasn't even fully cognizant of my level of intuition at that point. 
But what's most interesting to me now is if you ask me, tell me about some magical people in your life, today I will say, oh, that friend is so kind. She'll turn up at your house the minute you need her with a big bag of stuff or whatever it is you need. She's, she's magic. Or, you know, I, there are a couple of stores I go to every morning on my way to the studio and there are some magical people working in those stores. They're always friendly, they're smiley, we always have a chat, they're magic. So to me, an intuitive or a channeler or someone who can artistically channel this masterpiece onto a canvas, they're magic, sure, they're connected to magic, but so too is the person who is kind, who is wise, who is compassionate. And much as the longer we live, the more we get this incredible view of experiences. You know, it's why I've always loved older people, people older than me, because they, they're wisdom trees. They've seen it all, they've been through it all, they have perspectives that I couldn't possibly know. So too do I believe as we go through our life, we, we get constant opportunities to access our magic. But I want to jump back a second, which is, we really mustn't separate the spiritual from the human. We do ourselves a great disservice when we do that. We really mustn't see an intuitive as different to human. To me, we're all intuitive as human beings. Now, some of us might develop that skill in such a way that it's a very dominant part of who we are in our life. Perhaps, a bit like someone like me, it also becomes a dominant part of our purpose in life. We're here to share it with others in the hope that the work that I do can help activate you into your intuition. So we all have different ways of using our magic and our gifts, but I wrote down this on the worksheet, so you'll have this. Our personal spiritual mag magic. So this is how I see our personal spiritual magic. Our unique ways of connecting to the spirit of life force energy through intuition, spiritual awareness, energetic intelligence, meaning you're able to read the energy of things and people, sensory and physical abilities. You know, you might be one of those in people who have just superpowers when it comes to what you can do physically, that you seem way ahead of your time. You might be someone who's very sensory in that you understand what animals are needing and saying. Other people don't, but put you in the room with an animal and you, you can tell what it's asking for, needing. You have that ability. So to me, our personal spiritual magic are ways that see us tap in to the magic and spirit of the universe. A friend of mine, I'll give you an example, has recently started seeing spirits at night in the room when she's asleep. And she's currently going through a journey where she's having to balance her fear around that because she's beginning to see spirits and it's just happening spontaneously to her. Spirits of other people, other beings. Now that's not something that happens to me, mine is different. But for her, that's how some of her intuition is showing up and developing. So we were talking and I said, well, first of all, find out as much as you can about other people. There will be loads of stories online or there might be books or workshops that can give you ways to understand and ground this gift. And when we really got down to it, I said, well, are any of these spirits harmful to you, aggressive to you? And she went, no. So the fear is just the shock that she's going through right now and also some of the beliefs of, is this bad? And I said, well, you know, this isn't something I can help you with because this is not my area of expertise. But go and find out as much as you can because so many people have this and I've worked with clients over the years who have that. So we all have ways that tap into the magic and spirit of the universe, but we also all have human things that we're dealing with. We have human fears, human beliefs. You know, I think for people who grew up religious, there can often be this real conflict when they start tapping into spirit or intuition because in certain religions, not all, but in certain religions, you're discouraged from having that direct connection. In fact, it can be very punished to have that direct connection. So we all have ideas, beliefs, perhaps wounds that we're carrying that when our magic starts to come online, 
we have to heal and we have to let go of these things. It's why they always say awakening is not for the faint of heart. It's not all unicorns and rainbows as any of us who've been through it can attest. And to me, awakening is something that for me has happened repeatedly through my life. I have bursts of awakening and each burst I have, I then need months or however long to integrate that level. So that's our personal spiritual magic, ways we tap into things that we would see as a little more outside the norm, esoteric. Here's the other one I wanna share with you. And this is the one my friend was a bit confused about, which I understood her confusion. Our grounded magic, our grounded magic, our unique developed human qualities that help connect others to more of who they are and their own connection. So to me, someone who's just recently become a parent, I always love witnessing a friend or a loved one go from being non-parent to parent. It's amazing to witness that transformation that happens in them because they develop this level of responsibility and caring and leadership and it, it, they become a whole new person because of the demands of that role with the child or the children. And they're there as custodians to that child's connection to life. So they are there to help keep the child alive, raise the child, bring the child into the world, hopefully impart as much as they can that the child might need, while also listening to the child and letting the child show who they are. And, you know, in a, in a, in a great parenting situation, the parent's going to do their best to provide what that specific unique child needs so that it can grow up in the world and be as, as open, as centered, as strong, and as able to give to the planet and their life and, and the child's purpose as possible. So our grounded magic to me is, is all of the things I mentioned earlier. So just a few examples of this for me, developed kindness, developed wisdom, developed listening ability, developed compassion, developed humor. I love it when people are making a room laugh, that's healing. You know, it, it generates an energy in a room, it opens people up. It's a, it's a gift for the one laughing and the one making people laugh. Developed mental brilliance. You know, perhaps part of your human magic is you have a mental brilliance that you are now using on behalf of society or on behalf of your family or on behalf of your friends. So my main point is, and I've written this on the sheet, accessing our magic requires awareness of both the human and the divine. It's that bridge where those two things meet that the really magical changes get to happen in our personal life and in what we can bring to the world. So allowing ourselves to connect to the spirit of life in ways that work for us, for example, intuition, nature or animal communication, artistic expression, in tandem with grounded awareness of who we are as humans, to be the clearest and most receptive vessel for that, and to heal and release anything in the way of that connection. I use myself as an example. Age 23, I hear my guides on the tube. I'm like, huh, this, this can't be possible. I'm not vegan. I haven't meditated for 10 years. I haven't been doing yoga and I'm certainly not in a monastery or in a spiritual ashram. I'm on the London Underground, the subway. And you know, that's a place where we're all closed off from each other and trying to avoid eye contact. How on earth can I hear the voice of my guides in a place like this? And I'm not a pure person. I'm not someone who isn't consumed by negative thoughts. I'm not someone who isn't trying to figure out his life, but boom, there they are. And they said, we've been with you since you were a kid. You just haven't heard us since you were six because it wouldn't have been convenient to your life journey for you to have kept hearing us from the age of six onwards. Now, I don't remember hearing them before six, but what I can tell you is they did not, they did not scare me at all. And the way they spoke to me and the clarity they brought to my life was profound and was never chastising or judgmental 
was loving but firm if I was wrong or if my ego was, you know, <laughs> running amok with something, they'd be like, no, 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 here's what's going on, this is your issue, here's why, they would explain it to me and I would suddenly see it, I would see it a bigger level, I would see through the eyes of energy, which I as a human being was never trained to do in this world. It's something I had to go off and find the teachers, the workshops, the experiences and then my own guides to help me do that. The reason I bring this up is I was never afraid of spirit, but I was very afraid <laughs> of how people were going to react to me. Um, for example, I'm going to be channeling on this broadcast and I know this is on YouTube. 10, 15 years ago, I would not have wanted to be channeling on YouTube. I would not have wanted to be seen channeling on YouTube. There were a few videos I had there at the beginning simply because I couldn't I didn't want to have to deal with some of the uh, pushback, judgment, attack you get. And it's not just channeling, by the way, it's anything. You know, the, people who push against alternative medicine, healing, spirituality, you know, it's a very uh, lazy uh, response to just attack it. It's defensiveness, basically. Um, but what I learned over the years is to just let go. And the reason I'm sharing that is, yes, channeling came to me as a very strong gift at the age of 23. I didn't see it as a gift at the time because I also didn't know I'd be using it for other people. I just knew it as something that was happening within me. But I, as a human being, have had to go through lots of uh, adjustments in myself to allow this to be coming through me the way it is today. And I don't regret it because the experiences I've got to have, the people I've met, and honestly for me, the pleasure in it comes from when someone says to me, oh my God, I just listened to your latest audiobook and it's made me more intuitive. And I'm like, great, that's, that's my job. My job is to put this stuff out my intention is to hope that anything I do in the world helps connect someone more deeply to themselves, more deeply to their magic, more deeply to peace, more deeply to all of the good stuff. And that, that's my why. And of course, all I can do is keep showing up best I can and keep moving through my own stuff as it comes up. And that's the piece I wanted to share with you. Accessing your own magic is a very alive process, just like as we go through our life. You know, when we're in our 60s and our 70s, we're learning new things. We're letting go of old things. They're no longer appropriate in that decade the way they were in our 20s, 30s, or 40s. It's the same with accessing our magic. It doesn't stop at a certain point. The more we can shed anything in us that's defending against more of our power, more of our love, more of our light coming through, the further we're going to get. But it will be a constant journey. It will be, okay, great, you're going to go out there as a tarot card reader. Brilliant, really glad. Now let's deal with this human fear of being judged that you have. Because as you go out there as a tarot card reader, there's going to be that one friend that you meet down the pub and you tell them what you're doing and everyone else has been good, but there's that one friend who goes, you're doing what? Well, isn't that nonsense? And if you have some part of you that believes in their judgment, you'll go, oh, is it nonsense? Oh my, oh my God, is it not? Oh my, whoa, oh, oh. It will all internalize until you get clear about, no, it isn't nonsense. A little part of me used to believe that because so many people told me that, but now I'm growing because all of these other people that I'm doing this work with are telling me about their direct experiences that they're having. They are telling me about what it's allowing them to create in, in our world. So to me, since I was a kid, the magical has always been the most interesting part of this world. And then the older I've become and the more I've accepted my magic, my own personal magic, my own human magic, the more I see the magical in everything in a way I didn't used to. I remember once uh, 
a friend of a friend knows a musician that I adore, a really wonderful, wonderful, creative genius musician. And they came up in conversation and apparently this musician was going through a really hard time in their life. And what they were working on was, they said, I want the magic I tap into when I create music to start to be more in my personal life because they'd had a lot of success, but their life was segregated. They let the magic really fly in this one area. And at a certain point of their success, they started to realize they needed to feel that level of connection and joy in other areas of their life. So as you're considering accessing the magic within you, it's always good to ask yourself, why? What's my why? This is a guiding light for any of us. So if you want to manifest something, oh, I want this special car or I want to manifest an artist studio, why? Well, because I love cars and it would feel good to me to have that red car or oh, because I love art and if I had an artist studio, I could paint. So it's always good at that moment to go, okay, is there something in the car that you're trying to heal? Good to know that. Uh, well, yeah, we never had any money as a kid and we always had terrible old cars. Oh, good to know. So you're trying to heal that. And by the way, go for it, get the car. It may or may not heal that childhood thing, just so you know. But know what the why is of what you're manifesting and, and, and what you're trying to create because it might be you don't need that car. It might be that there's some other way to heal that thing. And the same with the artist studio. Is it really that you need an artist studio or is it that you need to get over your procrastination and your fear of painting? Because procrastination is either a reflection that we aren't quite in the right place with something or we aren't aligned, or it's us avoiding what we need to dive into. And I should also say, if you're someone with trauma, especially complex PTSD, procrastination is a whole other uh, definition. You know, that procrastination can be a symptom of deep trauma. So put that one over there because that's a little different. But often there's something that we're, when we're trying to manifest things, I always ask myself, well, how can I have that today? If I can't create that thing, what energy do I think it's going to give me? And how could I create that in my world today? And then that will also help bring the artist studio. Can I go and paint today in that dark little room in my house, which is the only option? Can I just go and paint? Do I need that environment for the painting magic to come through? So it's always good to look at what you're asking for. So there are a few writing prompts I have for you. So for those of you who enjoy writing, writing is always good. It helps you reflect on what's going on in here. So question for you, and this will be on the worksheet if you are watching in the future. What are some ways you tap into spiritual magic? What are some ways you tap into spiritual magic? So think of times, activities and experiences where you feel most tapped in. So earlier in my life, I would have said, I tap in when I go for a tarot reading. These days, I would say, I tap in when I'm composing music. I tap in when I'm channeling. I tap in when I'm being an intuitive voice for others. I tap in when I'm in psychic communication with our cats, right? So think about that for yourself. What are some ways you tap into spiritual magic? And just jot them down. What are some ways you tap into spiritual magic? Whatever that looks like for you. Okay, and I'm going to move along because you can always pause this if you're in the future and, uh, and come back if you're, if you're live. What are some ways you display human magic? What are some ways you display human magic? So think of qualities others complement or enjoy in you. So for example, someone might say, oh my God, I always feel calmer when I'm around you. So you help people feel calm. 
that's some of your human magic. It's a developed quality in you that other people are feeling. Maybe you were born with it, but maybe you've developed it because of the personal work you've done. So what are some ways you display human magic? And if it's very hard for you to see that yourself, think of what others compliment or appreciate you for. The things you hear time and time again, the sentences, the qualities that come up time and time again. You always make me laugh. You're the one I come to if I have to solve a problem. So what are some ways you display human magic? Okay. And now, finally, if you've been around me for a while, um, you will know I'm a big fan of encouraging people to channel for themselves. We can all do it. It doesn't mean we're all talking to an angel or Jesus or an, an, an energy that we can name. It doesn't have to mean that. For some, it will. But for all of us, we can speak to our soul the voice of our higher self. So I like to say, you know, a great general question is, what does my soul want to tell me today? What does my soul want to tell me today? You might not like that word. You might want to say, what does spirit want to tell me? What does my higher self want to tell me? Use whatever word feels true for you, but you're, you're basically saying more than just my standard human mind, the bigger part of me, the magical part of me that's connected to my life, my destiny, this path I'm on. So if you've ever done that with me, you'll know that I literally give you that question and then I say, now just write for a couple of minutes and see what falls onto the page. So my question for you that's specific to today's broadcast is, write a message from your soul or higher self if you prefer, write a message from your soul to see what it wants to tell you about your magic. I'm actually gonna make that clearer. <laughs> I've realized I could have written that far clearer. What does your soul want to tell you about your magic? What does your soul want to tell you about your magic? What does your soul want to tell you about your magic? Now just write whatever comes to you. Don't judge it, don't overthink about it, just write what you hear, what comes. What does your soul want to tell you about your magic? Take a few more seconds and I'd encourage you to pause if you're still writing because I'm going to carry on. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so you can always come back to that if you need to or press pause and then resume afterwards. For me, the biggest life-changing piece of magic in my life has been channeling for myself and tapping into a higher voice. I still love getting, you know, I have a, a couple of readers that I really enjoy and I go and receive readings from them and I, I still enjoy that. There's a power in that. It's no different to asking wise friends for their advice. It's very helpful. And it's nice to be on the receiving end of someone else's perspective, reflections, but there is something so powerful about doing it for yourself too. And allowing yourself to access a more magical, higher voice inside you on a daily basis. So as a practice, I would encourage all of you to spend, you know, five minutes a day channeling for yourself, perhaps two or three times a week. 
what does my soul want to tell me today? And just see what messages come through. You know, you're always looking for love and support. You know, you never want the message to say, you must go to Brazil right now and drain your bank account and buy a flight. Again, that's a great example of, are we giving all our power away to our spiritual magic and forgetting our human magic? Because if your human is fully there, <laughs> they'll look at your bank balance and go, uh, no, I'm not doing that because I don't really have a safety net. And that doesn't seem like a logical choice to me. So human and, and magic are always in interaction. There's our grounded human magic, the wisdom we've earned and accrued. When it works in tandem with our spiritual soul magic, incredible things can happen. Incredible new ways of living can appear and we often call it getting more into the flow. When your life is more in a flowing state, when you can experience gratitude, connection, joy, presence, more than you ever remember. That's when you know you're in a flow state. And remember, the reason I am still a huge fan of the personal development work that really set me on my path to open is because we need to shed old patterns, old habits as we go, which is why human personal awareness is key. I've met people who have really good spiritual gifts, but they don't want to look at their human habits. They want to, you know, put it all out there in spirit. And you watch them operate and you think, wow, they're always telling me about their latest vision. And they gather nine people around it and time after time it just falls apart because they're not recognizing that they shouldn't really be in a leadership position. Or if they do want to be in a leadership position, they need to learn to help and work with and treat the people that they're dragging along on these visions better. They can't just decide to recruit people for their vision and not include them in it in some way. I've seen that happen many times where people are not only giving their own power away to spirit being better than human, they convince a bunch of other people to do it too. It's the worst case of cults and you know the guru trap that we see playing out on the planet. It's a very dysmorphic power imbalance that we see playing out. But a cult can only exist if a large number of people, or certainly more than the one running the cult, are willing to give their power away to a leader or a person or a group. It can only exist if people are willing to give their power away. So I'm a big proponent of, as you get more in touch with your magic, as you get more in touch with your spiritual connection, the human us is going to demand that we keep up. It's going to say, oh, okay, great, you're getting more into synchronicity and flow. Great, then we need to let go of some of that perfectionistic mind of yours. Oh, what do you mean? No, my perfectionistic mind has got us very far and has kept us all very safe and very organized. Yeah, it has. Thank God for your perfectionistic mind. It got us this far, but now we need it to get out the back seat of the car and walk the rest of the way because it's going to really get in the way of these next few big things that your perfectionistic mind is not going to be allowed to understand in advance. When it looks back, it will go, wow, that seemed like a crazy idea and it felt very uncertain to me. But I see how it worked. We took a leap. So there are always parts of us as human beings that we're being asked to shed which is why, to me, the world of personal development and the world of spirituality are a conjoined superpower. I've seen people who refuse to access spirit. They only want to do it through a very mental human way. And that might really work for them, by the way. That might be the way they're, they're wired. But I've seen some people be very denying of what they call the woo-woo. And equally, I've seen people who want to stay in the woo-woo world rejecting humanity, rejecting personal development. Certainly my path has been enhanced by both and I wouldn't be here doing any of the things I'm doing today if I hadn't walked both the human and the magical. There's magic in humanity. It's pretty magic that we're alive if you think about it. Even though I know we get very seduced into the stories and the dramas and the pain or the suffering that we might be in, it's pretty extraordinary that we're alive today. Because when this body stops animating, we're not here anymore. 
this identity that we're all in today is gone. You may reincarnate as a soul if you're someone who ascribes to that, but you will not be this identity again. And this identity that we all are today is also completely dependent on this planet right now and where we're at today in 2023, what we've become, what we're influenced by. So the reason I wanted to hopefully impart the importance of recognizing the magic in the human as well as the magic in the spirit is the joint relationship in those two places is really where the power lies. The power lies in the bridge between those two. Sometimes we're more in our spiritual life, sometimes we're more in our human life. So long as we're balancing, so long as we're keeping a thread of connection, we'll be okay. But for more and more of us these days, we're walking a path that includes both. So one of the reasons we're doing this broadcast today, normally I would do something on the solstice, June the 21st, but we're actually going to be running a soul magic online retreat. So the reason I'm doing this early is because I still wanted to do something for free, uh, but I knew that I couldn't do it on June 21st. So we're here a little early and the whole journey of my soul magic experience is, I basically said to my guides, the Zs, you know, you've been going really deep on these times lately. You know, the, the messages they're imparting or pieces that they give me to impart through energy updates or other work that I do we're very much looking at this particularly challenging time that we're going through. But as they've always said, the further through this decade we get, the lighter and more conscious things can become. And so they've always said, we are becoming the new human soul. We are becoming a new version of humanity. And no, that doesn't mean AI, the buzzword of the day. Uh, no, they mean that the power of our humanity is actually more important than ever before uh, at this time on earth. So the soul magic experience, I, I said, please give us some principles of who we're becoming and how to live. So we actually are here in the studio where soul magic is going to be broadcast from. My brother from another mother, Davor Bozic, who is a Slovenian musician who I have been collaborating with for 10 years, he intuits his music while I channel, and we've done that in workshop rooms all over the world. But we had never captured it on film before. We'd never you know, been in an environment like this where we can broadcast it to thousands of you around the world rather than you know, the, the hundreds who might show up for a workshop. So that's what soul magic is. Uh, I will be channeling these messages from the Zs that relate to who are we becoming, how do we manifest? What, how does manifestation work in this day and age? How does it show up for us? How do we become more magnetic in our lives? What about abundance? What is the true nature of abundance? What it means for us and how can we flow it through ourselves? What is the fifth dimension? A lot of people have been asking this question because there's a lot going around. So they literally break down the third dimension, the fourth dimension, the fifth dimension, and they show how we're all living in each of those states, usually each day, but we are going more toward the fifth dimension. And what does that look like on a human level? And several other topics. So basically I asked them for timeless teachings about who we're becoming. And it's called soul magic, which is why today I wanted to, uh, for those of you who won't be in that experience, I wanted to take a little of the energy of it and bring it to you. And that's why we're about to channel. So I'm about to channel the Zs and they will have a message. Uh, I'm not sure what it will be, but hopefully it will be on track with uh, accessing the magic with, within you. Otherwise, this will be very awkward. Um, yeah, so I normally close my eyes when I channel. They deliver a message. For those of you who know me, you know the drill, you know how this goes. My personal perception of what is channeling doing, more than the information, that might open you or give you an enhancement on the way you see things, which in itself is of value. When you expose yourself to channeled or intuitive energy, you remember it. 
in you. It's not about the. It's not about me. It's not about my guides. It's about you, and it's about what you tap into in yourself as you listen to it. So much the same way that if we listen to emotional music, we're likely to get in touch with our emotions. If we listen to dance music, we're likely to want to move. When you listen to channeled or intuited information, you listen through the voice of your own intuition. And like anything, the more we practice something, the more we become it. So that's the point of channeling, as far as I'm concerned. Many others might differ with me. And of course, there are great messages and there are great perspectives and there are teachings that they help us move beyond. But the more I've done this, and I've done this for 19 years now, I think the greatest magic around it is that for those who resonate with me and the way I channel, because of course if you don't, I won't be for you, you're actually getting in touch with your own higher self, your own soul, your own channeling, your own intuition, however that looks for you. So. Because you and we are magical whether we see it, know it, or own it. We are, we just are. It's pretty magic when you think about what the world is and the experiences you've had. Okay. Hmm. <coughs> hmm. Good, ha, a pleasure to be with you all and mm, what is perhaps mm, amusing on a human level is the fact that uh, what you are experiencing when you hear, perceive, see and feel us through Lee is to you something separate. Uh, to us it is not separate at all. Uh, imagine we are nine flights up above Lee's body and all we have done is descended down the lift and he has opened himself to allow an ascension to take place, albeit temporarily to allow us in, to allow our perspective in. And our perspective cannot fully be allowed in because our perspective is not as, shall we say, dense as you need to um, perceive things on a human level. So anybody who is channeling, uh, they are doing their best to translate the vibration, the frequency, the wording of the other entities, energies, beings uh, so that you as humans can understand. But of course, this is not our language, this is not how our voice would sound if we were free of this bridge, the bridge known as Lee. But the bridge is important because bridges connect you to where you want to go. It's why so many of you are fond of other people in your life who can connect you to spirit or who can connect you to love or who can connect you to laughter or who can connect you to health and well-being. You see, when you look at the world from our vantage point, all of you are simply bridging each other to life every single day. Uh, the people who work in healthcare, be it alternative or regular, they are there to help keep you alive. Uh, and of course, there are arguments as to uh, is alternative better than traditional medicine and we aren't going down that rabbit hole with you. And if you have a very fixed belief about that, we would ask you to let that go for you are making a whole group of people the same and no group of people are the same. So for example, uh, some of you might say, oh, that's a corrupt group over there. And we would say to you, not every member of that group will be corrupt. They may be unbeknownst to them working in ways that are limiting potential, uh, but there is no such thing as a blanket statement for a group because you are all unique. You are all unique and you should be. You all have a unique point of focus. You all have unique talents. You all have unique gifts. You all have unique ways of connecting to higher consciousness. So accessing the magic within you is exactly that. You are accessing the magic within you. And the way you access it will be different to everyone else. It will not look the same, feel the same, smell the same. There might be some similarities but you are a unique being and one of the greatest, if you like, numbers that have been done on humanity and your mental well-being is a lack of awareness around your true spiritual power as human beings. 
It is extraordinary the consciousness you hold, and yes, there are parts of your world and elements of systems that are wrapped around you that don't let you express or experience your empowerment. We are aware of that. Depending on where you are in your life on the planet, uh, what location you are in, uh, what governmental system you are currently under, the levels of empowerment and freedom that you are experiencing are unique to you. They are different across the globe. So we are not getting into, shall we say, arguments about empowerment or magic as a blanket statement on the earth because there is no such thing. There are highs and lows around empowerment and magic all across the globe. But it is sometimes in the most restricted areas that magic will appear. Because magic is the only way out. The human restrictions have become so great that the connection to magic becomes a single point of focus that is so needed. Because the human world is restricting you so much uh, that you cannot find a solution anywhere other than spirit, magic, faith, uh, asking for angelic or higher power help. So you see, it is often why so many of you will turn to, uh, for example, prayer when you are in a difficult place in your life or when you need help. It is why many turn to whether it is uh, religion or organized religion or whether it is spirituality at dark periods of their life. Because in that moment where your human life has become so squashed or limited, the magic of spirit inside you comes screaming out because it knows you should not be this compressed. It knows that it is not your true spiritual nature to be repressed, oppressed, or compressed. It is a human nature pattern that you are experiencing and trying to heal through as an ancestral mm, mm, collective. Yes, there are some terrible things that are done uh, by certain humans on this planet that come from the lowest points of consciousness. And we understand, we know that's what you're dealing with because many of you have been dealing with it for many, many thousands of years. But is that really where you want your focus to be? If you are a magical activist, a spiritual activist, then your focus will go there, but it won't deplete you. You will be going there because you know you are there to bring some justice, some healing, some pattern breaking to those areas of life. But for the rest of you, never use the state of the world as a reason to disconnect from your spirit or your magic because your spirit and your magic is who you were born to be. Think of little ones on your planet, those who are first born, particularly in that first two to three years of life before you get too embroiled in the egoic nature of being human, you play, you sense, you look at the world with wonder, you emanate an energy that most around you are appealed by. Now, of course, if a child is very quickly shut down, and there are many children where this happens, the parents don't know how to love or support the openness of the child because either they had a wounded upbringing themselves, so they replicate judgment, rules, punishment on tiny beings who do not understand anything uh, that is being mm, shown to them as reprimand, yes, those children shut down very quickly. They do not emanate light. They immediately get into the dance of trying to find the light whatever way they can, trying to manipulate, uh, trying to get some semblance of control over their needs uh, when the parents and the mm, guardians of these children are not in any way serving or seeing their needs. So they get into the fight early. But for many children where that is not the case, magic, wonder, the senses are quite unbridled. You see it and all of you came in that way. You came in with your own design, your own path, your own destiny and your own set of skills, talents or magic. Now, for some of you, it's as simple as remembering what you enjoyed as a child and going back to that. Some of you will say, well, yes, as a child, I loved ballet, but 
I don't think I am going to like ballet now at the age of 65. And we would say to you, well, you'll never know unless you try it. Ha! Huh. And even if you go back to ballet at the age of 65 and you do three lessons and you realize it's not for you, you will awaken the energy in you that got arrested when you stopped ballet. And it may become something else. So perhaps it wasn't the form of ballet that you loved as a child, but it was the expression of movement through the physical form. So going back to the place where you remember that stopped, going back to age eight where you stopped doing ballet because you didn't want to do it anymore and you didn't realize what you were letting go of, go back and do a few ballet classes, let that energy come through the body again, and then let the energy tell you where it wants to go next. So the ballet class doesn't really work after three classes, but there is now an energy of aliveness in you that you enjoyed, that you had forgotten, and it makes you a little more confident to go and try out salsa or some other form of physical movement, or perhaps it just reawakens the part of you that likes to go for a hike or a walk that had shut down. For a part of your energy field, a part of your magic, a part of your design got shut down in childhood. That's why you have to go back and open those doors. Not just with a therapist through talking. Your body will reactivate these things for you if you give yourself over to bodily experiences that are more than just mental, more than just emotional, physical, metaphysical. Metaphysical, from our perspective, is when you go beyond the physical into the energy world that you are deeply influenced by and connected to on a daily basis. Your mind may not have been trained to see or perceive it, but you are in it every day. You live in a metaphysical universe, but you have been taught to see yourself as a singular human being. And the limits of that singular human being training can be quite suffocating, quite depressing, quite disconnecting. Why do you think when so many of you found spirituality again, uh, you were so delighted? You thought to yourself, some of you, oh, this is amazing, what an incredible world I have discovered. And we would say, no, it's a world you remembered. You rediscovered spirituality. You rediscovered magic. Maybe at a human level, you had never explored it as consciously in any other lifetime as you are in this one. So yes, there is some level of newness, but it is not new. It is home. It feels good to you. But that doesn't mean that remembering and activating your magic isn't going to ask you to heal a few wounds. So let's go back to that ballet class. The reason you left ballet is you started getting teased by some of the other people in the ballet class. And you felt the judgment energy from other people in the playground. And so you decided, oh, I don't like the feeling of this judgment. I don't like the feeling of this teasing, so I'll just shut the ballet down. And so now you judge yourself physically in a very subtle way because of that childhood imprint. So in order to uh, let that imprint go, yes, you can talk it out with the therapist for 15 years, or you can fast track it by identifying it with the therapist and then putting yourself in that ballet class, age 65, and realizing the 65-year-old you, instead of judging herself for being in ballet, is actually quite proud of herself because she's done something she's a little nervous to do right before she walks in. But you're moving energy. Don't be surprised if you start crying when you leave that class. Don't be surprised if energy moves. It doesn't mean you're going to cry every time. It just means you reconnected yourself to a part of your lost expression, your lost magic. That is why healing is magic. Healing is magic. Healing reconnects you to your magic. It reconnects you to lost parts of your light, lost parts of your magic, lost, lost parts of your superpowers. Healing is not just sitting in a room full of people crying for four hours and then going home and thinking, well, I feel better now because I cried for four hours with a bunch of other people crying for four hours. No wonder you can't drag your friends there. Ha! You tell them, oh, what happened at that workshop? Well, we all sat around and cried for four hours. Oh, sounds terrible. What's the payoff? The payoff is you get yourself back. You release some of those wounds. You release some of those feelings. You allow yourself to remember the magic within you. When you break down some of those walls and wounds, 
as a society, Lee himself mentions there are judgments and even attacks on spirituality. Pay attention. Even your uh, favorite uh, spiritual teachers, voices, authors, people that you think are quite lovely, go and look at some of the comments around their work. And even if they're wholly positive, you'll be surprised how nasty some of the negative ones are. Nastiness is a defense and an attack. You don't need to be nasty unless you are trying to defend your own belief system by attacking someone else's. You may just say, oh, this isn't for me, or I didn't resonate with this, or uh, yes, this wasn't as good as the last thing for me. For me is the key. But when you come in with a sledgehammer and try and annihilate someone else or something else, there is a wound that is highly active, and there is a wound on your planet of separation from spirit, and it's a painful wound. We are not saying, by the way, that everyone on the planet needs to believe in or use channeling. We are not saying that your magic has to look a certain way. For one person, their magic might be found through the church. For another person, their magic might be found through mystical pursuits. For another person, their magic might be found only in nature. They have no interest in spiritual or mystical or religious philosophy, but they go out into the forest where they have chosen to work every day, and they know they are in God's cathedral among those trees. They know it because they feel it in their body. They feel the sensory connection they have to that very alive world out there. They were born that way, and so they decided to go and work within that world of nature. It is why so many who garden or work on the land have an innate sense of peace they can access either when they do it or they are more peaceful more of the time because they do it. They have a direct plug into the heartbeat of nature and its vibration that brings you back to your rightful home in your body. So, the last thing we will say today is to speak to those of you who bring the magic to the world. Yes, you watching and listening. Yes, even you who <laughs> think you have stumbled on this in your first week of personal development, spiritual development, whatever you want to call it, and you're like, I don't quite know what to make of this. I'm still watching. There are a few things that have made sense to me, but some of it is going right over my head, and I'm not quite sure what to make of any of this. Or, I'm here because I'm a big whopping mess right now, and I'm trying to not be a mess in my life. Well, guess what? It will go beyond fixing yourself. You will fix yourself. You will figure out how to be less of a mess in yourself, and then you will become an ambassador of this message for others. Not the message that people need to channel. No, no, no. The message that you are of spirit. You are human, and you are of spirit, and you are connected to magical realms. Those of you who experience the magic of music, the magic of art, the magic of play, the magic of physical prowess, whatever that looks like for you, the incredible feeling of aliveness you get when you have run for 10 miles, that to you is a miracle, that your body allowed you to do that, keep that going, sustain that. And the trail of energy you leave when you run through the world is significant. You break energy patterns, not just for yourself, but what was left in the place you are running. So those of you who say, well, I go running to clear my mind, and by the end of it, I feel like I've cleared my mind. Yes, you've cleared a lot of other people's mind too. You go running down that street where that day there was an argument and another person was very sad and another person just an hour earlier was feeling euphoric. You run through all of that. And at the speed that you go at, you break energy patterns that are left there above the ground. So you don't only clear yourself, you clear the energy line for all. You shift the energy and that is your magic. As human beings, you are here to experience your own personal magic, experience the magic of these times and what that affords you, because even though we understand many of you bemoan these times or worry about these times, there are things that you can do at this moment in human history that you've never been able to do before. And you need to understand that. And those things can be very helpful for your future. 
technologies, communication methods, the ability to connect to others that's going to be very helpful in building a healthier future for humanity than the one that you are currently in and the one that several individuals would like to keep you away from. They would like to keep you held in this position and slowly but surely more and more of you are waking up to say, no, this won't work. And the more of you wake up to that at a level of consciousness, at a level of feeling, at a level of awareness, the less the old ways can maintain control and keep you in a more difficult world than it needs to be. So when you wake up your magic, you not only heal and help yourself by connecting to something that is innately yours, you also become an ambassador of it on the planet for others. So yes, you who are watching this uh, or listening to this thinking, well, I'm here because I'm such a mess. No. Your point of focus right now is that you're a mess. The wider version of that is there's a lot of mess in the world and you're feeling that quite deeply right now through your own life too. And then the next level is you will figure out the formula to go from feeling and being a mess in your life to becoming less of a mess in your life and more connected to the spirit of life and more aligned with the positive aspects of life than the negative and then you will become an ambassador of that energy on earth just by walking it around the planet or by telling your friend who is deep down in the hole crying oh yes I looked just like you two years ago and the friend will either fight you because they don't want to hear about the positive they want to stay down the hole or while they're down the hole believing the hole is all there is they will suddenly hear you and trust you and recognize that what you are showing them is, I am a bridge. I am a bridge. I am showing you that from where you are right now to where you are going to go, there is a bridge you can walk across because I walked across it and now I represent that bridge for others. And that is an act of oneness and connection. Those of you who've heard this term, Oneness, the fact that you are all connected. Well, what is one of the greatest things you can do on earth as a human? You can connect others to oneness. Whether that's through kindness, through generosity or benevolence, whether that's through spiritual teaching, whether that's through love, whether that's through avoiding humans altogether because you really can't stand them very much, but you'll build them a very nice garden that they can all enjoy. You just don't want to see them. Ha! Connecting others to oneness, connecting others to spirit. Weaving your spiritual and human energy through your life in a way that it impacts others. So to conclude, we have been with Lee since he was a child, but now we are also emanating too many of you through him, and that is the work he does. So he is fulfilling his mission of magic just as you are yours in the ways that you are doing it. And if you feel you aren't doing it right now and you get hard on yourself, we will tell you two things. Number one, you're not seeing yourself clearly. You're missing some things. Ask friends about yourself. Say, recently I was asked what my personal magic was and I had no idea. In fact, I thought I don't have any. What would you say is a positive quality you experience when you were around me, if you don't mind me asking? And see what they say to you. Ask at least three people. But uh, don't go and ask your judgmental mother, if your mother is judgmental. Be wise about it. Ask people uh, who you feel are open enough to truly see you and give you an honest answer, not a biased answer. That is point one. Point two is these times are asking all of you to become more powerful, more aware, more t switched on than you have ever been in your life. Not always easy to let go of those old ways, habits of being. But once you do, and once you balance the human enough that it can let the next levels of magic in, this life, this path, and this universe will greatly surprise you in how it wraps itself around you.
You and spirit are a team. You and your magic are a team. It's time to remember your magic. That's why you are here. And you remembering your magic will be a gift not just for you, but for all who come into contact with you. And for the more benevolent-minded among you who are struggling a little bit with self-judgment, so it's hard for you to let yourself remember your magic. If you are struggling to give yourself that gift, recognize the end result will be that you actually will pass it on to others and leave an imprint of positive change on this planet that this planet truly needs at this time. You are all needed and now is the time for more of your magic good, in peace and in love to all. So, I hope that something you heard, felt, saw, realized in yourself in today's broadcast can bring you an opening or a moment of peace or a new direction to go in. Life's a crazy ride, man. It really, really is. And, um, you know, the more that we can stay connected to the broader sense of the world, certainly for someone like myself, which I suspect many of you are the same, you know, I, I've got one foot on the ground and one foot in the sky. That to me has been how I've learned to balance, allowing my spiritual self and my human self not only to coexist, but to feed and learn from each other because one sponsors the growth of the other. As I grow as a human, I can let more of my magic in. As I let more of my magic in, I'm asked to grow in areas of my humanity and release old things. So, um, yeah, I really hope that today gave you something. It was my pleasure and honor to do this for you and that of my team here. And if you want to go deeper with me, my work, the Z's, uh, we are doing this online soul magic retreat in June. Now, even though we start the retreat, um, I believe the date is, let me think, 10, 11, 12, 13. I wanna say it starts on June 14th, if I've not got that. Yes, June 14th to the 26th. And there is a link underneath this video to find all the details. But there, there will be these channeled broadcasts on these topics about how are we working alchemically? And while I'm channeling the Z's, Devor is intuitively bringing through music all tuned to 528 hertz, which is a healing frequency in music terms, so that you can have these powerful, visionary and healing experiences in the soul magic, uh, in the soul magic online experience, and even though we start it on June 14th, you have lifetime access to the replays. So you don't have to panic if you can't be there live one of the days. I will, of course, do a big Q and A broadcast at the end where I'll take any questions you have on any of the topics that came up. And I'm thrilled to say that special guests David Pramal and Maten, who to me are just some of the most heavenly divine music. Um, I've invited them to come and give a special concert exclusively for our participants. So that will also be part of the experience, as will a remix album of mine and Devore's music that will be coming out at the end of August. You will get that as part of the Soul Magic experience. The album is called Metamorphs because these are songs of ours that have changed shape thanks to these other wonderful producers. And uh, that's just a handful of the things you get in the course. So if you care to join us in June, 
we would love to have you with us for soul magic. And for now, I will wish you all love, say goodbye. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you hit subscribe uh, on the YouTube channel. We put out about three videos a week. So if you've enjoyed this, hit subscribe on YouTube so that you'll always be notified whenever there's a new channel video, a new energy update, a new energy teaching from me, or even some of our music. So thanks for tuning in everybody. The link to find more about Soul Magic is underneath this video. Take good care of your hearts, yourselves, and take good care of your magic because it's one of your superpowers. And I hope that today has somehow helped you open to that truth in some way, shape, or form. Lots of love.